so let's shift gears and finish this up by by talking about returning to covenant. And by the way, when you when you when we say that, you, you have to always remember that God does not need a majority to do this. We don't have to wait until America's cleaned up and 300 million Americans are finally now walking in covenant with God before he can heal the land. God always begins and does what he does through a remnant. Always. Somebody said, well, can he do, it? Can he do this through a remnant? Somebody else said, and it's true. He's never done it any other way. God has never done anything other than through a remnant. It always starts with a small group. Then it spreads. He didn't wait until all the giants were gone and all the idolatry was out of the land of Israel, Canaan, before he told Joshua, get your shoes off, you're on holy ground. It wasn't holy yet because it wasn't holy because all that stuff was gone yet. It was holy because he was standing there. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do this, 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 this may be a little, some of you will get this, maybe all of you will get it. Some of you will think it's weird, but it's, you're just weird. <laughs> when he rolled back the Jordan River, not a thousand feet so they could all cross, 20 miles. They couldn't even see the, the, where he stopped it. Why did he do that? Because he rolled back the Jordan all the way to a little town called Adam. Adam. Because it was a picture. All that crossing over and all that's a picture of the cross, the resurrection, coming out on the other side. We could, we could give you all the sim, symbolic things there that to show you that that's what that was all a picture of and in us leaving the old and entering into the new, new life. And when he rolled that river back, he was painting a picture that he's rolling back death all the way to Adam. He's rolling back the curse of slavery and sin all the way back to Adam. But when he rolled back that river, I think twice, at least once, I think twice, he uses the phrase, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And that word cut off there is the Hebrew word for circumcision. He said, I'm separating this land. This is all a picture of us going to the cross and having a circumcision of heart and coming into the new life in Christ. But he said, I'm separating this land to me. That's what circumcision was a sign of. Separation to him. Get your shoes off. This is my land. It's holy now. And he not only cleans and heals us, he heals the land. There are curses that enter into the earth, the land. Crops don't do what they should do. The weather doesn't do it. He said to the Israelites, if you sin, your sin will go into the land, and the land will spit you out. You'll defile the land. But he knows how to even heal the land. Every revival in history that's been a true revival has affected not only people, but the earth. Go get the video uh, of, of the revival at Clay County, Kentucky. It's called Appalachian Dawn, D-A-W-N. And how when God brought re revival to that county, it was, a, it was the meth capital of the world. The cartels connected to the Mexico cartels 
the sheriff, some of the sheriff, deputy sheriffs were involved. The uh, police were involved. The head of the, what's that, the group that started in schools try to keep drugs out. I forget the, the initials, but Dare, the leader of Dare was a part of the cartel. And, so, and the sheriff, deputy sheriff, and, and some of the one or two of the judges. So, so when the when the feds would come in and and let the cops, you know, the police, the sheriffs know they're coming in, they'd tip off the dealers. It was it was all a mess. Sixty two officials, six or three, went to prison when this was all exposed. There was a pastor involved in the in the ring. But the defilement had even affected the land. And the animals, the deer had all left. They, were, they, couldn't, they couldn't hunt deer anymore. They were all gone. They didn't want to be there. The fish left the river. And all their tourism dried up. The water became some of the very worst water in America for them to drink. But when the revival came and the repentance came and the land and, and the... And the that everything was cleaned up, then without treating it or doing anything, for some reason, the river became like the sec first or second purest in America, the water right there. And the fish returned. And the deer returned. And then they, the, 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 the whatever group it was decided to relocate elk from the west to the east because it used to be elk in Kentucky and Ohio and this part of the country. So they brought 100 or so in. Now that's multiplied. It's a pretty decent sized herd. And all those elk started migrating to Clay County. Now what do you think the county is in Kentucky? It has the most, the, not just in Kentucky, east of the Mississippi, the most elk in America. Clay County, Kentucky. Because when God starts to move, it doesn't just heal people, it heals the land. And he, he told it in Deuteronomy 27, 28, here's what's going to happen if you keep covenant. Here's what's going to happen if you, if you break covenant. And a part of what happens when you break covenant is nature gets messed up. And the blessing is, if you keep in covenant, it'll rain when it's supposed to rain. And it won't rain when it's not supposed to rain. And the plague, the, 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 uh, the, the, the insects and bugs won't destroy your crops. Your barns will be full. But if you break covenant with me, here's what's going to happen. So the reason America experiences so many natural disasters is because we've broken covenant with God. And it's not that God is up there saying, give him a hurricane. Jonah, there's a verse in Jonah, and the NIV translates it this way. I think it's 2-4 or 4-2. Or so. Read the whole book, you'll find it. But it says this, those who worship vain idols forsake the grace that could be theirs. It's not so much a judgment is not God up in heaven being angry. He, does, he takes no pleasure in the judgment of the wicked. Judgment is a built-in consequence of sin. It's sowing and reaping. If you do this, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. It's just an unwritten law. Jump off the building, gravity will work. Break covenant with God, these things will happen. 